Hey class, how are you doing? So the, the goal of this video is to show you how to do lab two. Obviously the following labs um, that you have, it's not gonna work the same way. I am not going to do a step-by-step -step tutorial showing you how to execute it for obvious reasons, right? Um, I will explain how it's supposed to be done we will work in class um, the uh, all of the the subjects including the lab assignments uh, inc including the technical assignments but i'm not going to do a step-by-step -step tutorial okay this is because this is the first lab so i need to introduce you to it right get you used accustomed to the environment and the the process Okay, so if you go to Canvas, you're going to see here lab two, right? That's the lab that you're going to do um, this weekend. So in lab two, the objectives are explore basic static analysis tools, um, explain the benefit of information gathering for malware analysis and describe types of data that is important to gather in analysis. The lab goal is to analyze given malware samples using virus total, flaws, PID, but also strings. Okay, and here you have the lab two tasks and report uh, template document, and it's this document right here. And you're going to see that basically, um, you, it basically explains you, gives you a step by step instructions right so for example um, task one hash and virus um, it's uh, basically explaining to you how you can compute the hash and then check it uh, using the virus total uh, com website right so open the powershell command line in uh, windows obviously this is in the practice labs you run the command md5 sum lab2.exe, so forth, so on. So basically you have a very pretty simple and straightforward instructions, okay? Um, okay, so now the if you look at the practice labs, it tells you to execute this lab on one file, but here you can see that you have to execute it on this file over here. Now, there is, um, you may find it a little bit difficult transferring this file to your practice labs virtual machine. So I want to show you how this is going to work. Okay, I'm going to go back here. So first of all, make sure that you have downloaded the, uh, the lab two tasks and report dot docx file. Okay, that's where you see the instructions. Then you're going to come here, right, and access the practice labs. Okay, so let's do that. I want to, uh, this is the introduction to the practice labs. I want to go back to title. Okay, here it is, lab two. Um, you have the, the exercises here, so you have five exercises, right? Um, f the first one is computing the hash and using the virus total website. The second one is using strings. The third one using PID. The fourth one using UPX. And the fifth one, last one using flaws. Okay. Okay, so let's launch it. And it's going to open the pop-up window here. There it is. That's what we need. This is the virtual environment that we have in our practice labs. Okay. Okay. So again, if you go back here to the instructions, right, it will tell you. Um, so go to the next step. Go to the next step. So it will tell you that you need uh, this file here. 
um, but this file is in a different location and that's what I want you to, to, to understand. Okay, here in the practice labs you do have a folder, right? And you can open any, uh, oops, you can open any um, file explorer window here I'm going to open the flare that will take me directly to the location where I want to go to. Okay. The flare folder. Now here in the flare folder, you see a bunch of folders, right? And you have the PMA labs folder, right? Here you have the binary collection. And in here, you are going to see some files. Now, for our practice labs, these are not the files that you are going to use, okay? So there are two basic ways that you can, uh, uh, two steps, two procedures that you can follow in order to download the file into the practice labs virtual machine. I would recommend, in my opinion, the easiest way is to open your uh, Firefox browser, Okay, and then you access github.com slash Diogo DNO slash cyber 366. However, as you can see, probably because of the version of uh, Chrome, uh, I said Firefox earlier, it's not Firefox, it's Chrome. Because of the version of Chrome, you may see um, you may not see the files listed here, okay? So I would give it a try. Um, this is by far the easiest way to download the file, but if it doesn't work, if you cannot see the files, and if you do want to spend some time um, fixing this, that, that's, um, that's your option. Um, so again, if you don't see the files here, then you can go to the other traditional way, which is you go back to um, the, you go back to Canvas, okay? You go back to Lab 2, there it is. You download this file, there it is, okay? Now, here's the thing, your operating system most likely is going to do this, okay? So it's going to uh, block this file. Now, again, depending on the operating system, it will give you, when it shows that message, you have the option to download suspicious file or delete from history. And I want to actually download it. With this file here, I can go back to this window of the practice labs, okay? And you're going to see this folder over here, okay? If you go there, you're going to see the file manager, and here in the file manager, you can upload uh, that file, okay? So I'm gonna browse, I'm gonna go to downloads, I'm gonna, I'm gonna select it, there it is. And I am going to upload the file, okay? Now what this does is it will send this file to a specific environment, a specific location in our uh, practice labs virtual machine. So let's take a look, let's see where it is, okay? So I am gonna resume lab here and then it will take us back to the practice labs VM, okay? So I am now going to open my Internet Explorer and here you see public files and you see my files. If I go to my files, then you see your lab2.zip uh, file in there. Okay? You download this file. Oops. Download file. Apparently I'll have to do it again. Okay save and I'm going to save it in the desktop. This is just my 
uh, personal preference. Okay, basically you can download it to anywhere. Now keep in mind what I told you guys before. All of these um, uh, actions that you take, such as creating files, uh, changing, installing applications, anything that changes this in environment will be reset once you um, uh, finalize, once you close the virtual machine. Okay. So what that means is I downloaded this file. If I close this uh, practice labs virtual machine, I will have to go here again and download it again. Okay. Just keep that in mind. Okay. So also this is a zipped file. I want to right click it and I can close this window here. Okay. I want to right click it and go here to 7-zip and extract here because it's the .exe file that we want to deal with, that we want to examine. Okay. So there it is. The file is there. Now we can finally initiate our analysis. So let's go back to our um, uh, template file, our instructions file. And the first task is to hash and virus check. We need to open PowerShell and run MD5 checksum. Okay, so let's do that. Now, at this point, you can either use PowerShell, okay, or if you prefer, you can use the command prompt. I will just follow the instructions and use PowerShell. Okay, so here um, you see this window here and what you need to do now is to simply do MD5. Okay, we can go back to the tutorial and all that we need to do is to use MD5 sum and the file name MD5 sum uh, lab2.exe, right? The file is right here. However, this is not going to work. Well, that is because we're not in the desktop folder. So I'm going to do CD desktop. And here I am going to do MD5 sum lab2.exe. And there it is. Now, because of that issue that you may see um, in your uh, with your Chrome browser, um, you have two options here because if you use Chrome, there is a chance that this happens. Maybe in your um, system it doesn't. In your practice labs it doesn't, although it might. Um, so virustoto.com and then you cannot see the um, what it's supposed to, to show. Okay, so what you can do is download Firefox and then you download Firefox and install it. I did it already. It's right here. Or you can use your own operating system browser and paste it there. Okay. I am going to use the Firefox uh, uh, browser that I installed here, virustoto.com. There it is. Now, and here you can either use the checksum that you computed. Okay. You can use a URL or you can use the file itself. Okay. So you have those um, options. So again, here, if you want to, you can paste the, the MD5 sum over here. If you prefer to just drop the file. Okay. You can drop the file here. Okay. I posted the But I'm going to just drop the file over here. Okay, choose file, desktop, it's the lab2.exe file, where is it? Here it is, check and hash, there. Okay, so as we can see, right, that's what we get with virustoto.com. Uh, 
you have the detection summary here. Basically, it's saying, hey, all these sources here detected as a malicious code. And then you have a, um, um, uh, the list of all of the database sources that they use. In order to see more information, you can go here to details, right? So that is this file's uh, checksum. This is the file type. Is It is a Windows EXE file as it is. We can also see that it is UPX compressed, which is going to be important for one of the tasks that we are going to execute, okay? So two important informations here that we are going to need um, in, in our upcoming exercises. One, this is a portable executable file, and I'll explain what that is, and it is also UPX compressed. Okay, so that's done. What you need to do then is include the screenshot of the virus total result to your report. So just a screenshot this, you paste it here. You can use the same template file. That is perfectly fine. Okay, just keep pasting the screenshots here. And then we move to our second task. That's using strings. Okay, so let's go back there. Come on, come on. Okay, here. I am going to use strings, um, lab2.exe, and it's giving me all these uh, results, okay? Now, as we discussed in class, there is a bunch of stuff here that is not going to be very helpful, right? But we do see some things here at the bottom that can be helpful. So I can see that it includes, it imports the kernel32.dll uh, dynamic library. It includes, it imports the exit process, Windows functions, the get process addresses uh, functions, a function, the load library a function, and the virtual protect function, okay? However, how do I know that there is nothing else um, up there? Because we saw that it scrolled down so quickly, which means that there's a bunch of information up here, right? So you can use the the uh, your scroll to scroll up and down, but it, as you can see, it's not easy to do this, right? It's not easy at all. So what is recommended is that you use the strings command and then you redirect the output to any file. Let's call it strings.txt. There it is. Now you can see they have a strings.txt text file here. You double click it and there it is. The output is all there and it's much easier to search and find whatever you're trying to find. Okay. There it is. You can see some characters here, right? You can see more characters here. Obviously, they do have a meaning. We just don't know yet. It would require a deeper analysis, but there is an indicator that it does um, uh, involve some string treatment, parsing string or strings, right? Probably trying to fetch a password. There is an exception here, a function that treats an exception or an error, okay, un unhandled exception. Um, so again, we see a bunch of uh, strings here, right? C is three, M, time, S. Okay. Some other strings here that might also be um, password attempts. That is a possibility. Okay, but we can see <clears throat> as far as the, the exercise here, does this return any readable strings? Yes, it does. We can see them right here, right? Um, what are they? As I mentioned, the kernel 32.dll is a dynamic library. The remaining ones are um, Windows uh, functions. Okay? 
And then we are going to use the PEID. Okay, so we need to understand what the PEID is. PEID, um, I'm sorry, lab two. There it is. So PEID <clears throat> means portable executable ID. It's a tool to identify portable executables. Okay? And we also need to understand what a portable executable is. Every .exe file or any file that contains Windows instructions is going to be uh, Windows executable instructions is going to be a portable executable. Okay? So what that means is if you see a file and it's it has the .exe extension, well, there is a great indicator that it is an executable, uh, which means that if you double click it, it does something. It executes instructions. But malware writers, they will always try to disguise, right, to obfuscate their malicious code, which means that you not always see malware with the .exe extension. You may see malware with some other type of extensions, but it is actually a portable executable. It is a Windows executable file. So what PEID is going to do is, it is not only <clears throat> going to tell you whether this is a PEID, but, uh, I'm sorry, a portable executable, but it will also give you more information about that portable executable. It will give you the entry point, the file offset, which at this moment is not important. We'll address that at the right moment, okay? But again, we can see that, yes, it is a portable executable, okay, as it identifies, and it is a Marcus and Laszlo uh, portable executable, which means that it was also packed using UPX. So this is another important definition. It's packed. Okay? And what that means is, again, that they are trying to hide some information by packing this file. Okay? So if we look at this and we see that this is a packed file, that means that we should be able to try to unpack the file and see what other information we can extract from there. That is why we have the UPX tool as well. So I'm going to go back here. Okay. Um, you got to include a screenshot, examine the results. What does PEID say, say about this executable? Is it packed? Yes, it is. What is it packed with? UPX. Okay. Therefore, in task four, we're going to need to use UPX with the dash D option. That's the option that will try to unpack this file. So, UPX dash D lab two dot exe. And it, you could see that very quickly something changed here. That is because the lab 2.exe file was unpacked. And we can see that information here. Okay? So the file size, you have a new file size. Okay? And if we PID this file again, we can see that it does not say that it is packed anymore. The UPX uh, information is not here anymore. That is because uh, UPX with the dash D option was able to unpack or decompress this file, okay? What that means is that we now have more information here, more readable information, okay? In our next class, next week, we are going to address the portable executable file sections. That's something that you should not worry right now. Okay, so run upx-dlab2exe, right? Verify that the UPX, UPX, UPX 
successfully unpack the file, okay? And then you do what we just did, use uh, PID once again, okay? Okay, and then we have finally the last task, which is using flaws. Floss, um, lab two. Now you're gonna get this same um, standard of result here, which is it will show you a bunch of information, and obviously you do not want to wait for that output. So what is recommended again is that you redirect it to the output uh, file output text file okay and you see the file here you can open that file and you can start um, analyzing the output basically what it is asking you is can you find more information when you use flaws compared to when you use strings and obviously you can right First of all, it is capable of translating a bunch of, a bunch of encoded information, right? When you use compared to when you use strings, you can see more information. So, for example, this uh, exception here, you could not see this ex exception. Um, these uh, C code uh, definitions here were not there. Um, you can also see some other uh, definitions, uh, variable definitions over here. So basically, you can see some C uh, code or uh, source code being translated into uh, this result here, which you didn't get when you used uh, strings. You also see some uh, days of the week over here. You see months over here. You see month. So what you see here are some uh, standards that are dealing with data, right? Which means that it's trying to, probably, it's trying to identify um, some information that is probably being um, uh, provided by the, the user, or it's trying to fetch the, read the system uh, date, okay, and time, and then it performs a specific task based on that information. Okay, so that's how you use flaws. So you use flaws, include the screenshot, and does flaws de obfuscate any strings? What are they? We just saw that yes, it does. Okay, so that's how you're supposed to execute lab two. Again, there is some information that we saw here that it was not explained. I will explain next week. Okay, specifically. Uh, the header fields in a portable executable file. Thank you very much, guys. Have fun.